Hi everyone, my name is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. Thank you for tuning in today. This week we're going to look at the Tulip Nebula, also known as Sharpless 101. One of the things that fascinates me about this particular area of the night sky is that we're going to be able to see both the beginning and the end of stellar life in one picture. I hope you'll stick around. We're going to learn a little bit more about the different types of nebula, and then we're going to be able to see both the beginning and the end of stellar life in one picture. Okay, so this is the picture that I've captured of the Tulip Nebula. And of course, as soon as you look at it, you can clearly see why it was called that. This area right in here looks remarkably like a tulip. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this so you can kind of capture uh, what we're looking at here. This is a, an emission nebula located in the constellation Cygnus. Now, if I go over here, to my Stellarium. You can see here, this is the constellation Cygnus. This is the star Deneb. This is Seder. Two pretty common uh, stars that are relatively easy to find. And if we zoom in here, you'll notice that on Stellarium, I'm starting to get a lot of little green dots pop up. You're starting to see a lot of stars. The reason for this is we're looking in towards the center of our own galaxy. And you'll notice that this is an area that is just filled with nebulosity. Um, if I continue to zoom in further, you'll see here is the Cygnus star cloud, which is just um, represented here on the picture. I've actually, uh, for my picture of the nebula, I've actually reduced the stars a little bit. This is an area that is just jam-packed with oodles and oodles and oodles of stars, and um, as you might imagine. So this is kind of the area we're looking at if you're trying to find it. Now, I mentioned just a second ago that this is what is known as an emission nebula, and it dawned on me, you might not understand exactly what I'm talking about. So let me just give you a really quick, very basic tutorial or explanation of what we mean when we're talking about various types of nebula. There are basically three types of nebula that we mention, okay, three really broad categories. They're emission nebula, reflection nebula, and absorption nebula. Now let me show you what I mean by that. An emission nebula is a nebula that is being, um, where the gas is being ionized um, by a nearby star. So in this case, I forget which one of the one, which one of these stars it is, but one of these stars is exciting the area of gas around this region and causing it to glow. You might think of this like a fluorescent lamp, which glows because the mercury vapor inside of the fluorescent bulb is excited by an electrical charge and it begins to glow. And so another, you know, kind of interesting area of nebulosity that we could see where this is true would be an area like here in M16. This is a recent picture I took of M16. All of this area of gas is being lit up and excited because of the, you know, starlight that's passing through there and it's beginning to glow, okay? And so basically, if you think about it, um, uh, kind of furthermore, with an emission nebula, there are two kinds of uh, emission nebula that you might think of. One, of course, is these big areas of hydrogen two gas. That's what we have here in the case of the Tulip Nebula. And this is really representing the beginning of stellar life. Stars are being born in this area. You can see that a little bit more clearly, uh, actually, in this picture of the Eagle Nebula, you see these very dense areas, especially these little dots here and here. And there are some other. These are called Bach globules. And these are areas where the gas is so dense, it's beginning to collapse on itself. And this is where new stars are being born. All of these stars in this cluster here 
are all very, very young new stars. That's because you're looking at basically stellar nurseries when it comes to these types of nebula. The other type of an emission nebula happens at the end of a star's life. This is the dumbbell nebula. This is all an emission nebula in the sense that this is gas that is being ionized and caused to glow. But this, in this case, it is a very, very tiny star right at the center of the uh, dumbbell nebula. You can barely see it right here, which has burped out some of its gas, and it's nearing the end of its life cycle. And so what you have here is kind of emission nebulas occur both at the beginning and the end of stellar life. We kind of see life and death uh, represented here. Okay, now. The other couple uh, types of nebulosity that you'll find are reflection nebula, where these are not areas that are glowing uh, because of the gas, you know, ionizing them, but they're reflecting the light around them. This is the Pleiades. Um, and, and again, this is not gas that is being excited and ionized, but rather it's simply reflecting the stars behind it. Okay, that's, that's a reflection nebula. The other type of nebula is an absorption nebula, and you will find those. Those are basically these areas that are really, really dark. A great example of that would be here in the horse head. Now, of course, this is an area of emission nebula, all of this red, but this very dark area it is very, very dense uh, cloud of material that forms the horse head, is actually an absorption nebula. It's so so dense that light from behind it is not shining through. And of course, this is also an area of great star formation. So that kind of gives you an understanding of, of what I mean by these different types of nebula. Okay, let's get back to the Tulip Nebula for a minute because the Tulip Nebula, like I said, is associated with a much larger area of nebulosity uh, you'll see here it's over on this far edge. But if we move over, there's the Crescent Nebula. This is the um, uh, this area around Seder. Um, and uh, but if you come moving over, you have the North American Nebula, the Penguin, uh, the Pelican Nebula. These are all areas. There's just a tremendous amount of gas in this area. Lots of nebulosity that shine through here. Uh, what's interesting here about this, this is an area of the sky that also has another example of what happens at the end of a star's life. Okay, so here in the actual nebula, this area here, we have stars that are being born. This is an area where new birth is taking place. But if we move up to this orange star right here, this is rather interesting. Um, this is the area from uh, which has an X-ray source known as Cygnus X1. Now, this star, this orange star right here, is known as HDE226868. And it is actually orbiting around this uh, Cygnus X1, which is this very strong radio source, X-ray source. It's a black hole. Now, you're not looking at the actual black hole here. This is a star that is circling and orbiting around that black hole every 5.6 days. In fact, um, some astronomers have taken a picture and, of this and shown the slight change in position in this star. Uh, you'd have to have much more you know, detailed uh, instrumentation than me, but that star is orbiting around a black hole. And of course, a black hole is created at the end of a star's life when it, the, it's so massive that it collapses in on itself and forms this singularity. And so I thought that was a rather interesting area of the sky that we can see both the beginning and the end of a star's life. Here's a good example up here of the black hole that, is, that, that uh, this star orbits the end of a, of a stellar life cycle. But here in this area, we're seeing the actual birth of new stars as they're being formed from this area of nebulosity.
All right, that's my uh, that's my uh, uh, video for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. I'd also appreciate it if you'd share it with your friends and let them know. I'm trying to build up my subscriber base. This is a slow process, but you can help by clicking on subscribe and share. You'd do me a great favor if you would. Tune in next week. We'll look at some more fascinating stellar objects. Thanks. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please help support me by clicking on thumbs up and share. Thank you.